Our trooper Echo stood with Captain Rex, who was holding his pistol in one hand. He was on edge. So, Echo, how did you survive that fall off the LAAT gunship? Well, I landed on some soft sand, and I think my armor padded my fall too. Thank goodness the Republic invested so much in our padding, huh sir? But Echo, you were blown up at the Separatist prison compound, remember? Oh, well, yeah, well there was a second rescue mission, and uh, the LAAT lurched to the side, pushing me out. Right, right, of course. Uh, will you excuse me for a moment? Sure thing, sir. I'll just keep waiting for the doctor to check me out. Good man, you do that. Rex went and saw Rico, who was in deep discussion with Racket. Rico, Racket, I just got out of the med bay with Echo. Well, what did you find out? It's definitely not Echo, sir. His story didn't match up with the actual events. Just as I thought. He acted too strange for a clone. Well, what do we do now? Find out who he is and who sent him. That's great and all, but how do we go about that task? Rex asked. He was getting a smidge impatient, especially because of the emotional roller coaster that was today. Uh, we could rough him up a bit, Racket suggested. That might have been a good idea in Racket's regime, but not in the brigade. Racket. I know it'll be hard getting used to being back here, but we've got to get back on the same page. I agree, sir, but I think some compromise should be in order. Got to be more open to other opinions. You're right, you're right. But no roughing up prisoners. We're smarter than this. He doesn't even know that we know he's not really Echo. Let's play our cards close to the chest and figure out what he is doing here and who sent him. Not to mention who he is really. Right, sir. I understand. That all sounds good to me, lads. But uh, on another topic, I want to do something to integrate Commander Wolf into the army again. Maybe get him into the old 501st? Well, Rex, I'm afraid that the 501st has been reborn through the hard work of Commander 55 and Captain Glasden. I'm sure they still love you, but most of the troopers there only know the leadership of 55 and Glasden, and I wouldn't want to take that away from them. But I do have another idea you could do. I'm all ears. Captain Rex and Rico spoke about this plan. And then Captain Rex went to go talk to Wolf. So Wolf, you thinking about sticking around with the Brigade? You know Rex, I haven't been with a team in a long time. All the loss over the years was making me hesitant to get close to anyone again. But hanging out with you and Mental for the past few weeks really made me remember the good old days. I think I will stick around and help out wherever I can. Well that's good news buddy because I made a bit of a deal without you. Rico is giving us command of a legion, more specifically letting us create our own. Now, these wouldn't be new clones since Camino Output hasn't been creating enough clones to make one, but it would be the scraps of squads and legions that need new organization. So what you're saying is, we would be the legion of misfit clones? Seems fitting considering our history. Aye, it really does, doesn't it? Regardless, I think we should go with a classic name. The 104th Legion. Or rather, the Wolf Pack. Alright Rex, you're gonna make me tear up over here. You've convinced me. What about Mental? I'll be honest, that crazy clone has kinda grown on me. I think he was actually going to see Rico just after me. But you're right, that nutcase certainly fits in with our team. We should try and recruit him. Mental and Rico had in fact been talking, but not about business. They found themselves reminiscing about the past. Remember that time Rookie passed out after eating too many bompers? <laughs> I think that might have been me, Rico. But darn, oh, those tasted so good. Do you have any? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I actually might have some sad news for you. It's about Rookie. After the Clone Wars, his mind was twisted by the Empire. I had to hunt him down and take him out. Oh. Mental felt a wave of anguish. Rookie had been his best pal during the war. But Mental, I want you to know, it truly was manipulation. At Rookie's deepest core, you could really tell that he wanted to be with his brothers, with us. But even the strongest of men couldn't resist the pure power of the Sith Emperor. Well, that is comforting, Rico. I'm sure he is in a better place now. And what about Sarge? Well, I think Sarge truly is dead from that valley battle where we all got split up in the end of the war. But there is a smidge of doubt in my mind. A few months ago, a force ghost of him kept on visiting me. It was definitely the Sith Lord Chaos, but he knew so much. I feel like maybe he was channeling a part of Sarge to try and trick me. 
I don't know how he would do that. That could be, sir. After traveling around with that funky Jedi Windu, I certainly learned a few wacky things about the Force stuff. <laughs> yeah, that wacky Force stuff, Mental. Regardless, it's good to have you back. I told Rex and Wolf that they could start up their own Legion. So if you'd like to join them, I'm sure they'd love to have you. I think that's a good idea, sir. I like those old blokes. They put up with my quirks. Quirks might be putting it mildly. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Either way, pal. It's good to see you again. Tucker, Blitzer, did you load up the gunship with supplies? Yes, Master. But why are we leaving now? Can't we stay for a few nights? No, Tucker. Coda and I realize that we need to go acquire a few texts. We think there might be more information on this Chaos Sith Lord that could help Rico in the upcoming fight. Ah, we'll be ready, sir. Won't we, Tucker? Yeah, 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 you dumb clone. Mace Windu left Tucker and Blitzer, who started bickering, and went to go talk to Coda, who had been preparing for the coming trip. Did you tell them? In a way. I didn't say we were going to Coruscant. Probably for the best. Making them nervous won't keep their heads clear. But we will have to tell them at some point, Windu. Especially since Coruscant's defenses are so much heavier now. Mainly because of Racket's foolhardy charge into them. We'll tell them in time. But what more did you find out about Chaos in your meditations? Well, I've got some more bad news. I saw him standing with a scientist. Some sort of monster was beside them. I'm afraid they may be mixing the dark side of the force with biochemical engineering. Ah, uh, nothing good can come of this. We need to go find out as much as possible. And fast. Maybe there will be a clue on how to stop him in the texts. Well, there's no sense waiting around. Let's go. Windu and Coda took off in their LAAT gunship along with Blitzer and Tucker. They were once again going into the galaxy. But this time, they knew where they were heading the heart of the Empire. Meanwhile, the Sith being Chaos remained with his chief laboratory engineer, Dr. Schlieffen. Sir, I am proud to announce that the serum is being perfected and the test run is in order. As it stands now, our Inhumans, whom I am calling Zombies, a term I came up with on my own and nobody else have ever used it in history, well, they can bite being and pass the virus onto them. It is by my estimate that an entire sheep can be turned into this creature in mere minutes. Very good, Schlieffen. I suppose it would be a good time for a test run. Let's send a ship of ours into Imperial territory. I think we should wait before we try it out on Rico's brigade. After all, the Empire's full of bumbling idiots. They won't know what hit them. Rico's brigade, on the other hand, they're a little bit more intelligent. So Schlieffen sent a ship over to Imperial territory with a strain of the virus inside of it. The Dutchman sat at a console on his capital ship, and a private came up to him to inform him that there was a rebel ship in the vicinity. Are they firing at us, private? No, sir. It's odd. There's no signal coming from it at all. Hmm. Very well. Send in a boarding party. Perhaps something became of the crew. Yes, sir. A boarding party of Imperial stormtroopers walked the halls of the ship, but no enemy were in sight. Eventually, the men began turning into zombies. It only took a few minutes before half of the stormtroopers were completely zombified. And then, more zombies proliferated as stormtroopers attempted to fight back against these horrid creatures. But it was futile, because they kept on multiplying. Back on Felucia, 55 and Glasden stared at the dead Imperial bodies that had been piled up before them. We made quick work of this battalion, didn't we, Glaz? Indeed we did, sir. Seems like these imps fall harder when they don't have a Sith Lord ravaging our lines. Aye. For a while there, I thought we'd lost our touch. But now it looks like Felucia will be ours soon enough. Does that mean assemble the men for the final assault? It does indeed. Gather the troopers. We're taking on the Stormtrooper last stand on the planet. Hey, what's up, you bad Larrys? It's your boy, Daily Tactics here, back with Season 4, Episode 1 of Rico's Brigade. This has been the longest break between Rico's Brigade seasons that we have ever had, and I'd like to thank all of you guys for being so patient, uh, because I really wanted to get this one right, so I've planned some things out for the season, and we're starting it off with an absolute bang of a battle, the hopefully final battle of Felucia for Rico's Brigade. So if we can manage to get our boys in the uh, Rico's Brigade 501st here a victory, 
then they will have taken the planet of Felucia from the Imperials. However, the Imperials are in full-on last stand mode. This is their last little holdout base here with all of their supplies on it and pretty much all of their troopers are here as well so they're going to be fighting tooth and nail to keep it under their own control so uh the imperials have a bunch of free roaming troopers they've got a bunch of static troopers on various ramparts they've got forward uh bases up here with sandbag emplacements uh they've got two of these e-web turrets in the middle and then they've got interior defenses all over the base as well so this is a serious serious amount of defenses for the Imperials. But Rico's Brigade is also bringing the pain. Uh, we've got 55 and Glasden here who are going to be hanging out at their forward operating base as the battle goes on, uh, and the 501st troopers will be marching ahead of them. They have three of these beam turrets here that are static, but they might as act act as artillery to pepper the base with some explosive fire while the infantry moves forward and uh, for the infantry themselves they have a lot of troopers about the same number as the Imperials have uh, and they're all free roamers that are going to be moving forward so as you guys might remember for Rico's Brigade I am allowed to control Rico's Brigade troopers because it's like a game campaign for us um, but I'm going to try my best to let it be as cinematic as possible and only interfere whenever it's really necessary. Either way, guys, I hope you're excited for Rico's Brigade Season 4. Let me know in the comment section what you think is going to happen. And be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the series. It lets me know you guys want to see more. Either way, let's get it started. All right, fellas, here we go. Pressing start right now. First battle of Rico's Brigade Season 4. The 501st is marching off towards the enemy defenses here. Oh, boy. The quiet before the storm. And bada bing. Fire starts off from both sides here. The forward sandbag positions of the Imperials are beginning to uh, fire out at our Rico's Brigade troopers off in the distance. Um, actually, quite a number of Rico's Brigade soldiers going down out here in the middle, uh, but they're also getting a good amount of fire out at these uh, Imperial troopers. I'd say that these Imperial defenses out here are very, very well fortified. I mean, look at these fellas. They've got a lot of troopers here with machine guns, with snipers, with uh, standard rifles. Uh, they're pretty well equipped over here. So, in fact, I think I might just go ahead and, uh, you know, push a few of these 501st troopers back a little bit, and we can, um, you know, try and take it slower on this, uh, this side of the field and try not to be caught so far out in the open. In fact, I'd like to go in slow-mo just to make sure we can organize a little bit here straight down the middle uh looks like we haven't taken too many losses a few troopers are dead straight down the middle but the uh middle attack is going rather well we're taking on the ramparts right now of the imperials uh luckily the e-web turrets haven't quite gotten involved yet but actually a few of our 501st troopers are starting to climb up this little hillside here and uh fully engage with the military base ahead of them they're still taking a lot of fire over here but uh they're making far better progress than our fellas over this way um, who are still stuck trying to take out this little uh, Imperial sandbag position and it is not going too well. This Imperial sandbag position is going down because of some crossfire over there but this one dead in the center is only just starting to lose troopers. They did take out this mini one over here. So what I'm thinking is actually we send a squad off to the left over here and, uh, and see if they can do a, a nice little flank there. We'll rush that uh, order forward and then also simultaneously send a squad straight down the middle so that way they um, do a little bit of a pincer movement. The far left uh, seems to be doing just fine. The Imperials on that sandbag are down for the most part. Let's see what happens over here. Okay, so here comes our flanking squad and they are getting into position now and beginning to fire out at those sandbags. They are receiving a little bit of fire from the fortress off to the right. That's a bit of a problem, but I'm gonna keep them here so so that way they can uh, keep on firing at this sandbag on the left. Come on guys, rapid fire it. I'll order them to, to fire more vigorously. There we go, actually these guys managed to crawl up and get a cheeky little grenade off. Another grenade from the Imperials coming in. This guy's probably gonna be dead. No, he's okay and he managed to make it up onto that sandbag and the grenade's gonna go off behind him so it doesn't even matter. Beautifully done there troopers, beautifully done. All right, let's go into normal speed now. Uh, straight down the middle, it looks like our boys are beginning to have a little bit of a struggle bus going on over here. They're not managing to push too much farther uh, than these little sandbag defenses that the Imperials were 
nice enough to set up for our boys in Rico's Brigade. But you know what? They're still getting fire out, and it looks like they are managing to kill uh, quite a number of imps over here. So I'm not too worried about that position quite yet. And I think the left flank could be a promising way to break up the monotony over there. Except we don't have as many troopers on the left flank as I would actually like to have. So let's reposition a few of these fellas over this way um, to get an attack going down this route and then that'll actually flank the side over there a lot of the free roaming imps uh crawling up the top over here that's not great what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to form squads for all of our troopers right now in rico's brigade that way the ai naturally works together a little bit more rather than as separate units which i think is definitely a necessity how, how did our cannons do? This cannon only got one kill, this cannon also only got one kill, and this cannon got no kills. So, these cannons were virtually useless, actually, as it turns out. I was not expecting that. Um, I thought they'd do a little bit more. I mean, they're pretty good positions, so... I don't know. Whatever, I guess. At least they got kills. You know, one kill is better than none, so it was a resource that was utilized. <laughs> Uh, we can say that as much. Okay, so we're actually doing a bit of a push on the far right over here, hoping to get some of our troopers into a nice little flanking position for the middle. Actually, that E-Web turret might be chewing us apart here, so we're gonna target that pretty vigorously here with our troopers. Come on, guys, come on! I'll put a lot of fire. There we go. Actually, I think we killed the, uh, gunner on that E-Web turret. We did lose a lot of troopers in doing so, but it's good to just have that thing out of the way right now. Um, so it is not useful for the Imperials at all anymore. It is kaputs. And actually, the second one over here seems to be have been uh, taken out by our 501st troopers who are still grinding away at the middle zone here. So that's beautifully done, boys. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the final battle of Felucia is going pretty okay at the moment. Our boys on the left flank seem to have solidified their position. So I'm actually going to push them forward just a smidge, see if we can't get closer to the base and get new angles on more troopers. We are taking some pretty heavy losses right now, um, as this is definitely like the peak point of the battle, and this is make it or break it sort of a moment going on right now, but I think uh, if we can manage to catch the win, the losses will all be worthwhile because Felucia is just such a valuable position in the galaxy. Big grenade coming in right there. It's on the far reaches, but like there's a history there of the Clone Wars. It would be a morale booster for our clones if we, you know, finally got the victory in uh, Felucia that they never managed to because of Order 66. And um, not to mention, I'm sure there's plenty of trade routes and, and whatnot going on around here. So I, I think it's a pretty worthwhile position to take. Not to mention all of last season, 55 and Glasden were grinding away at Felucia, trying their best to take it, and never managed to. So the fact that we might finally break through these lines uh, could be huge just for the 501st in general, because the 501st um, was the uh, military group that was in charge of trying to take it last time around and it failed miserably, but now uh, they might be able to do it. I mean, to be fair, they failed mainly due to the fact that um, uh, they had a... A, a turncoat in their midst, midst in the uh, form of chaos, but I mean, how would how could the clones possibly know that? Trying a little bit of a right flank over here, but these guys on that rampart are really stopping us pretty heavily. Um, that's not too good. Um, maybe we could get a little bit closer over here since there's a distraction of those guys over that way. Let's see if we can't get a gren grenadier up there. A grenadier! In Granada. Oh yeah, I think we will. Oh no, he got sniped in the side. Oh jeez. Oh my god. Chill, boys. Chill. Chill, chill, chill. Oh my god. Okay. I think we need to start being a little bit more tactical here. Ah, it's just we can't. We don't have a good enough arm to get that up there. We're starting to put. Uh, I think troopers on movement mode hold right now. Um, I'm gonna take away their ability to free move. While we still have troopers available, I want to make sure we're utilizing them to their maximum potential right now. So I don't want them just yeeting themselves forward and getting themselves killed. Also, we're going to start bringing up some of the troopers that are a bit farther back right now. Some guys just sort of lingered behind for the most part. So I want to make sure they're up front and center. That grenade, okay, didn't end up getting any kills. That's beautiful. I didn't want to move the troopers because sometimes moving uh, soldiers when a grenade is active uh, we'll just get everyone killed, so sometimes you just gotta be patient and wait the grenade out. Oh, these towers are just just a smidge too high. What if we held the grenade for just long enough that it'll explode right there? 
Oh, no, that didn't work. <laughs> oh, these towers, yeah, they're just, like, barely above the height that we need them to be. Hey, it looks like these guys on the flank actually managed to take those guys out, though. That's big. That's big news. Okay, that means they can push forward and maybe alleviate some of the pressure off of the middle. We'll send everyone forward, though, on the, on the right over here just to make sure uh, that we are maximizing our potential on this little flank -a rooney All right. We're losing a couple of clones, but it seems like we are managing to get a few kills here on these ramparts, and that's really what counts. Just whittling down the enemy as much as possible. Come on, reinforcements. Get up here. Go, go, go. All right, all right. Regroup the squad. Back it up. Back it up. Run away. All right. Made it out of there with just enough troopers. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. We still have a few more soldiers back here that we can bring up as well. Um, I'm also going to empty out the uh, the cannons. They're... they're Gunners are just going to have to join the battle right now. Um, you know, they're, they're trained in arms combat, so they should be fine in this situation. Okay, still some skirmishing going on down the center. The These guys are all on free move mode. I don't like that. Let's get a few more over this way. Get a few more soldiers over this way. Okay. Oh, there's like a whole line of troops over there. Oh my god, no one's firing? Guys, why aren't... Oh my god, what a useless squad! What a useless squad. Wow. Wow, that was sad. That was really pathetic, guys. Huh. I don't know what to do. Okay. I think maybe... Hmm. Maybe since these troopers are distracted right now, we could... Yuck a cheeky grenade over this way? Could work. Oh, no, no. No! Shoot! Hmm. Can you guys kill that guy? Let's go get him, boys. Here they Can come. you guys get up and kill that guy? Oh, kill that guy. Come on, we just need to like start getting a few more kills. Start whittling down the enemies just a little bit more here, fellas. If we don't whittle them down, we're not going to make any progress. Do you think we should bum rush right here? A bum rush could actually work. Wait. Yeah, yeah, go in, go in, go in. Because they're... um. Their flanks are exposed right here. Come on. Butcher them. Butcher them. Butcher them. Keep it going. Keep it going. You guys are getting kills. Keep oh, keep it going. Keep going. There we go. Yes, that entire tower is now dead. Okay, back up. Back up. Back up. Nice little raid right there. Because now we've wiped out that entire rampart. And now these fellas over here are going to be able to come in the flank much more easily now. Because they won't have that rampart to deal with. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Take out that guy real quick. Nice one. Y'all are beautiful. Now let's see if these fellas... Alright. Doing a bit of a direct assault here. Come on, guys. Fire! Why aren't you able to fire? Oh, my God. Okay. Commit to the run, I guess. And get in there. Now kill those guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. You guys got it. There's just one more. Oh, it's... We only have one trooper left up here. Okay. That little raid wasn't bad. Not bad at all. Okay. The sirens of one of our vehicles back there is just going off. We're not able to use the vehicles, but that's okay. All right. Why don't you guys get in here, too? We could just use the troopers inside the base now. If we move past the cannons, we should be okay. You guys able to kill these guys up there? Not quite yet. Maybe if we move over here. Oh yeah, now we're... Now we can roast them. Yes, scorch them. Scorch them. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Okay. Now you fellas are going to come on through this way because I don't think they'll be able to hit you. And actually now, y'all can hit those guys pretty well. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I like it. And we are... Okay, yeah, we're... Like, sort of getting behind the flanks there. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful. We're doing it. We're doing it slowly but surely. Should we commit a little bit of an attack over here now? Ah, this, this area is still a little bit locked down. I'd rather flank it from around here. Okay, kill that guy. Kill that guy. Nice. Okay. Now we're going to get the flank around here. All right. Now can you guys kill? Make it happen. Yep. Grenade if you can. Oh, you just threw that grenade at all of our troopers. No, you fool. That guy ruined us. Oh, that was bad. All right, get behind some of these these areas. There we go. 
Beautiful. Now we can bring in the flankers over here. And these guys can just sort of sweep, I think. Yep, kill that guy. Push in further. Watch out for him. Okay. There we go. Nice. Nice one. Beautifully done. Fellas. Fellas, fellas, fellas. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Oh, sure, grenade. Wait, there's a guy right there. Oh, God. <laughs> Kill that guy, too. Nice one. Nice one. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Alright, now push in behind this fella right here. <laughs> nice. Okay. Now we can push around the flank here while simultaneously doing a frontal attack, I think. That'll distract, and then you guys come in the flank, and they, they won't see what hit them. Beautiful. Guys, this is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. Alright, I think we need to push in a little bit further here. Okay. Come on, fellas. Keep up the fire. We might have to charge up. Oh, God, those grenades. No, no, run. Mm. Whoever keeps throwing the grenades into our own troopers, could you could you stop, maybe? There we go. They're all wiped. Okay, that grenade didn't get any kills. There's one more Imperial soldier. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? He's right there. Don't let him kill you. Don't let him get another kill. Oh, okay, he got another kill. Let's see. There we go. Took him out. Whew. Oh, all right. This was a heck of an assault, guys. This was a heck of an assault. Oh, my God. The final fortress on Felucia. That was a good alliteration. The final fortress on Felucia. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's ours. It is the Republic's. Glasden and 55 can come in. Come on in here, fellas. And um, bada bing, bada boom. We did it. This is beautiful. What a great start to Rico's Brigade. I was kind of worried, actually, in the middle there, especially when there was, like, a mass slaughter over this way, that we weren't going to be able to do it, and the first episode of Season 4 wasn't going to be a victory, which would be a real shame. But um, we ended up pulling through, and we ended up making it happen, which was absolutely gorgeous, boys. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. I really appreciate you guys watching Rico's Brigade for four seasons now. It is still my most highly requested series on the channel which is insane because you know i've been doing this for the, the entirety of the lifespan of this channel and people still want to see what happens to rico and the gang so i'm eternally grateful to you guys for continuing to watch because um it it's really cool it's a cool thing to want people to watch you know something that you produce so i want to say thank you to you guys by the way uh water fountain boy and commander rico merch are out now hydro homie merch on my uh, teespring store they're really cool i really like the designs um they're up there if you would like to check them out and purchase for yourself um if you're interested at all don't feel the need to, but it does support the channel. Also, my Patreon is down there. My Twitter, my Instagram, my Discord, my Overtone team. All those fun things. Links are in the description below. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for 140k. That is insane. This channel has grown exponentially this year, and I am super, super heartened by it. So, um, yeah, I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.